when objects are heated or gain thermal energy, they change and almost all objects will expand with an increase in temperature. So for some initial length of some object, it will expand some delta or change in length based on that change in temperature. All objects expand at different rates, um, so there's a certain coefficient that is involved in for each of the different objects. The picture on the upper right is a thermal expansion joint for a bridge. So as a bridge ex um, expands and heats up during the summer months, the metal and the concrete expand in the bridge, and the bridge actually gets a little bit longer. And these joints on the ends of a bridge allow it to expand without buckling or pressing into another bridge or the above supports. The change in length for some material depends on the material that it's actually made of. So steel and copper have different coefficients of thermal expansion. Um, the original length of the object and the, how much the temperature changes. So for a greater change in temperature, the object will change more, change in its length more. Here we have the formula, the change in length is equal to alpha, which is the coefficient for linear experience, uh, expansion, times the original length, times the change in temperature. It's a linear equation. Since it's a linear equation, the expansion is the same as if we have uh, two separate pieces or one longer piece of the same of twice the length. Um, the overall expansion will be the same. So here we have just a diagram showing that. For something of two dimensions, so some area here, we have the expansion will be the same for some section of it or some greater part uh, of the system. So if we take some small hole or or part of a system, and we expand the system, the amount that that piece is, uh, the amount that that system expands in that hole here, kind of in the diagram, is going to be the same as if that missing piece were also heated. So the change is uniform throughout. It's all, and it doesn't kind of like, don't think of it as if you uh, have a ring and it's heated, it's going to expand and kind of close that gap. The overall hole ring will expand outward enough so that the, the middle piece, will, the opening will increase in uh, diameter. Bimetallic strips are one of the most useful things that we have in our daily life. They uh, monitor the temperature of our room, help us make our coffee. Um, anything to do with temperature and regulating uh, temperature, they're very helpful. Um, a lot of things nowadays also include uh, bimetallic strips and circuit boards so in case they overheat. Um, basically the way that they work is you use two different metals and the one metal will expand, expand excuse me, at a greater rate than the other. So if, for example here, um, when it's heated, the uh, metal, will, in this case the bimetallic strip, will bend one way and whereas it's cooled, it will bend the other way. Um, this can you be used to in, shut off a circuit, an electrical circuit, uh, change a thermometer reading on a dial thermometer, for example, or a thermostat reading, adjust something along those lines, uh, open a hole in the bottom of a coffee maker once the water is hot enough so that it uh, starts dripping, uh, allowing water to drip down. All sorts of these things are applications of bimetallic strips. Very useful, very cool. Here are two questions regarding the previous lecture that I'd like you to answer. First, thinking about the previous page um, with the bimetallic strip, which metal, brass or steel, has a greater coefficient of linear expansion? How do you know? That's the really the main part that I care about because I know you can look it up in your textbook, but based off of that picture alone, you should be able to tell which one has a greater coefficient of linear expansion. I really want to know how you figured that out. Just so look at the picture based on which one's heated and which one's cool. Second question, what was the change in temperature for the sidewalk concrete based on the new length of 3.004 meters after it was heated during the day? 
So here is the concrete between two buildings. Each slab has a length of 3.0000 meters. Um, during the day, it's heated up for some um, over some change in temperature, and it changes uh, to now a new length, which is given here, and it therefore buckles up. This buckling is due to thermal expansion, and you can actually go through and calculate the, how, the height that it buckles upward um, if you'd like to do that. That's like a little extra bonus there. But I really want you just to make sure you can find the change in temperature. And if you need to find the coefficient of thermal expansion for concrete, you can look in your book. All right. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you tomorrow.